Welcome back to the Outside Edge podcast, the podcast for the cricket lover who can be a little too intimidated by journalistic jargon. That's where we come in. My name's Paddy Ardil. I'm joined as ever by Trent Park, who is back in the UK. How are you, mate? Very good, mate. Yeah, got welcome home by a lovely 15-year-old on the train yesterday, just smoking a fat vape in my face. So, yeah, good oh, to see him back in London. Good to have you back, mate. How's the, how's the cold treating you? Yeah, uh, not too good. Had a cracked window first day we got here. We didn't realise. And then it was like minus 14 in the place overnight. Woke up with sore throat that I was dying. So, um, yeah, Pretty pretty Baltic Baltic mm. conditions then, pal. Well, yeah. <laughs> a lot has happened since we last checked in. Um, here we go for my rundown of what's happened in the last week. England wrapped up a 3-0 series drumming of Pakistan and embryonic Rayan Ahmed taking a tasty fifer in the process. Uh, the Aussies sealing a 2-0 win over South Africa on a minefield. Scott Boland and Josh Hazelwood having a frosty tete-a-tete in George Bailey's nightmares. <laughs> um, Aaron Finch chewed it to guide the Renegades home 31 red off 43 rocks in the Big Bash. That's still going on apparently. Um, and the IPL auction is ongoing as we're recording uh also west indies trauma translated to the women's game the other day um get around this trent uh they were bowled out for 43 in the fifth and final t20 against english tough sort of 20 minutes in the dirt there isn't it (laughs) um my question to you is is there too much cricket there's always too much cricket (laughs) too many (laughs) Well, not to worry. We'll dig into the IPL in a little bit when we welcome Outside Edge Cricket's very own Oscar Ress a bit later on. Uh, but, Cheno, let's dive into what all the listeners want to wrap our ears around. It's the Outside Edge Village moment of the week. Yes. So I actually don't have a village moment for you this week, Paddy. What I've done is I, I had one that I thought, you know, this could be pretty good. But we're actually now on TikTok. We're expanding the media empire that we are onto another platform it's tiktok and a few key people outside, to fly uh, about. outside edge product uh on tiktok for you there correct thank you very much and um we post that last week and then within a couple of days it's just blown up to 74k views 90 comments and boy oh boy is there some gold in those comments so i just want to read a few of those out to you and you'll read a few back to me because I, I saw you uh collated a few and we'll see what our reactions are to them. I think I think listeners will like this. this yeah, I, there. I think this is proper podcast content. All right, <laughs> t- t- take it away, pal. Take it away. Number one, amazing videos three four one commented Ryan Gibson equals knob, which <laughs> <laughs> which was replied by Jacob Inkst, who has said agreed. Got banned in my league as well for abusive language towards a sixteen year old, which was me. <laughs> It's the perfect setup, isn't it? I, I got banned in my league as well for abuse of language towards a sixteen-year-old, no less. At this point, your es- estimations of the bloke are pretty pretty rough. It's, oh, it was <laughs> it was me, by the way. No ab- abuse of language towards me when I was sixteen. <laughs> the best part about that was is that the amazing video is three four one bloke tagged Ryan Gibson into the comment and really? took me to another bloke who wasn't the actual Ron Gibson, but this bloke actually has a video of himself eating dog food. So oh it must be that guy. So, oh. That's so bogus. So he's, not, he's, not, he's not even Aussie, is no. he? No, even the other bloke on TikTok, both pumps. Oh gosh, welcome to the crucible, sir. Um, <laughs> this is one I liked as well. J2K commenting in reference to the 10-week <laughs> ban. Uh, so you should. Lucky you didn't get a punch in the face, which is just like, mate, you play cricket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the dumbest game in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've actually been involved in the game that someone's been hit. Sorry, say again? I've actually been involved in the game where someone's been punched. Yeah. Yeah, so when I had my little um, spell from cricket back when I was like 17, I think, I was playing golf. I filled in for my, like my brother's mate's team, like a little pub comp team, like a really village team. And um, one, of the, one of the blokes went umpire and he gave a like LBW decision not out. 
So the umpire walked past, the um, player walked past, said, how's the night out? So I was sliding. And just went bang, let him on his chin. No way. Walked back to his mic and bowled the next four. And no one said a word. I was <laughs> gobsmacked. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you never told me that before. That's <laughs> unreal. Oh, just clocked just cl- him. Just clocked him on the jaw. That's so bad. Can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine if, you know, Ben Stokes in prime 2014, 15 Stokes era, <laughs> you just get, just gets, no, it's, it's going over. Just clocks Kumar Damasina in the jaw. The first one I thought it was Nathan Lyon with Joel Wilson. <laughs> got Stokes here <laughs> at Headingley. <laughs> Uh, right, back on the comments, back on the comments. Okay, user 79057592895, which is Elon Musk's next kid. <laughs> That's like um, a Wi-Fi <laughs> password. <laughs> he said, he'll have an Australian contract soon if he keeps that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is self-deprecation amongst Aussie TikTok commentators. Oh, this is so, it. so self-aware. Uh, I like this one as well. Uh, Messer Mitch, 33, bit of a unit, someone to be a little bit afraid of. Um, he, 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 yeah, don't don't get on the wrong side of Messer Mitch, 33. He said he'd be brave doing that to me with a bat in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw this bloke. And I saw his profile picture. He's got about three teeth. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Oh, I can't do it. What, 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 are you, what are you gonna do with the bat in your hand, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> it's like an intro to a porno. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, this one comes in from Woodrow zero two seven. Very, he very eloquently said the batter should get ten weeks for being an absolute punt and not running to him. <laughs> Never heard punts in my life. That's so good. <laughs> we, yeah, we should just clarify. An absolute punts. <laughs> absolute punts oh. and not running through him. That's so funny. So he's 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 angry that old Ryan bodied the batsman and the batsman didn't just the batsman put, him, didn't actually put him on the floor. Put him through the deck. <laughs> <laughs> God, couple couple wrong ones in our TikTok comments, eh, Trent? Uh, yeah, Woodrow027, he should get to know Messer Mitch, 33. <laughs> Christ. Um, the teammates. This yeah. one's really good as well. This one sort of reminds you of the story you've just told me about, matey, uh, giving the old left-right good night to the umpire. Um, Harry Bow Supermix said, having watched this uh, piece of visual content, said, too right. I've had a bowler punch me as I ran past. I finished the run, turned for a second, and hit him with my bat. <laughs> Do you reckon he made it? <laughs> Do you reckon he was an audacious too? <laughs> Do you reckon there's a bit of mail on that story? Not a chance has happened. Not a chance has that happened. He's playing cricket just in a royal football. <laughs> Where are you guys? Where are you guys playing cricket? Oh my god! Is this in Geelong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a chance has that happened. He, he hasn't left his keyboard for three weeks, I reckon. <laughs> Barry Bow Supermix. He definitely stinks. Oh. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'll finish it off. I'll finish it off. Give us one more. Give us one more. This one, too much. I'm guaranteed this one's a bot. Um, it comes in from Ariant today. I want to say. Who who knows? Ariantye, I reckon. Oh, okay. That's what I'm going to go for. Yeah, I'll take that. Brant commented, kind of bloke that brings his missus and makes her watch. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, the profile picture was a female. So if it's yeah, not a boss, sure, do you reckon it's just her? Past experience. Do you reckon, yeah, um, is that just Ryan Gibson's missus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this bloke's the kind of bloke who brings me to watch it. <laughs> make him watch it. Make- She's got ten weeks away from cricket. How good is that? She's loving it. That is so <sighs> so funny. Um, yeah, we should say go follow us on TikTok for more of these village moments and more yeah. clip clips from the pods and stuff. <laughs> We're going to start videoing and uh, getting the the the, mm. the the visuals on YouTube and stuff. Um, you found out a little bit about Ryan Gibson before we move on, didn't you? Do you want to just tell the audience a little bit about this pal? Yeah, I've done a bit of research after a few of these um, 
keyboard warriors delightfully, delightfully informed me that he actually isn't Australian. He's an English overseas for a club in Geelong. Um, now, Gibbo, I'm going to call him Gibbo because he's now Australian, um, has a few levels on him. Okay, I'll just say that much. He's actually a Jet. He's played for England under, under 19s and played a first-class game for Yorkshire. Now, this is where Gibbo starts showing his true colours again, Radio. He uh he lost he had his contract torn up by Yorkshire for abusing an umpire and hasn't played a first class game since. And he's just genuinely been exiled, like old school Aussie, sort of just <laughs> banished from English cricket. <laughs> Too much of a menace. Oh, I've never seen a bloke more Australian. I think we should swap passports, me and him. Yeah, you're you're far too. He's an absolute beater. Yeah, you're he's... far too pom. Yeah, <laughs> pale, soft. Well, who'd have oh. thought? Who'd have thought it? One, one harmless, innocent clip could make us realize so much rewards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just why we hate cricket and love it so much. The worst thing is I've seen like twenty five of the blokes in Australia just like him. Yeah, That's AI AI thing. generated great yeah, cricketer. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> <right>. <laughs> okay, well before we. Do go and have that chat with Oscar. Uh, we've got one more segment that we've mm. we've started phasing in. It's Crickbait headlines. Um, should we get a few of them going? Let's, let's go. I'll start off, Pad. I'll let you go first, mate. Um, uh, thanks, mate. Yeah, just that kind. So I've got one. This one's about our little a little boy wonder, Rayhan. Um, one clickbait title about Rayhan Ahmed and him becoming the youngest Test bowler to get a Fifer on debut. Please. Okay. Um, I went for leg spinning fetus takes fu- <laughs> takes Pfeiffer gets dropped. Oh, there was something there about getting dropped as a baby. No, that's that's tough. That's tough. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't put a baby in there. Yeah, it's pretty loose. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go straight back at you. We can do it this yeah, way yeah, instead go, of go, three go. and three. Um, what have you got? What's your crickbait headline on uh, Boland versus Hazelwood selection headache? Okay, I've got, go. I've got one for you. Barrel or bush horse? Colin. Don't they do the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Can you imagine he gets dropped? I mean, he probably okay. will. Yeah, but average 10 points. Averaging 10, and he's on his home ground as well. Ooh. Six or seven. Yeah, play. If, you know, if he does play over under 200, how many times he's six or seven gets played throughout the match? On are we on Fox? On Fox, mate. Grim. Oh, grim stuff. Uh, over two hundred. <laughs> I think just. It was just Mark Howard just yelling into his microphone. Yeah, just just oh, making. Oh, six in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, just made, never wanted to press mute more on my my TV. <laughs> I'm going to try to put this to YouTube. You can see my face when I do that. That was very entertaining. Um, <laughs> right, yeah. Next one for you, Paddy. Um, an Australian journalist has tweeted out this week that saying that Basball is great and all, but he'd love to see it do it against Australia. Um, can you give me a best clickbait title about this Australian journic, journo sorry, and his rather moronic opinion on Basball? Pretty sure you said something like this a few weeks ago. <laughs> no, nah, didn't say that. I wouldn't say that, would I? No I'm proof, no claim. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Mark Warism's rife in Aussie press can Basbill <laughs> conquer the ashes? It's so true, though, isn't it? Our From favorite, the... uh, our friend of the show, Mash's favorite bloke as well. Yeah, Mark <laughs> Mash, Mash loves him. I mean, d- does anyone is anyone in in oh. in the cricket sort of audience? enjoy Mark War's takes, maybe. No. Probably not. Who um, would you like listen to either Mark War or Mark Howard for a day? Rope you one, sorry. Yeah, uh, that's like choosing who is worse out of Hitler and Stalin. Like I <laughs> I don't I don't I don't uh probably war. His face doesn't piss me off as much. <laughs> <laughs> Just to confirm, we've talked about dropping babies and Hitler and Stalin in one podcast. Yeah, this is yeah. this is getting a bit silly. Um, <laughs> uh, got another one for you. Your honest thoughts on Cam Green's IPL purchase? 
Okay, this one's a bit weird, a bit ropey. Um, Aussie Giraffe, latest addition to Mumbai Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> such a good shout, though. He is such a giraffe. <laughs> oh, he just can't. He doesn't know where his feet are going. Never. Yeah. He never does. Like a sort of, have you seen a giraffe being born? Yeah, like a, like a deer. Like yeah, a that, baby deer as well. That, yeah. yeah, that's Cam Green at the top of his mark. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to prod the front foot early doors. <laughs> right, last one for you. Last one for you, Paddy. Um, what are your thoughts on Sam Curran's record-breaking price at the IPL auction? I, I had a little think about this one, and okay. I, th- I think this, I think this, I've hit, hit the jackpot on this headline. I think I'd sell some copies Let me here. Daddy Mal, mate. Daddy one point eight million quid to play cricket. Is it enough? <laughs> <laughs> No, I want more. Yeah, never yeah. enough. Uh, and then last one for you, pal. Um, can you give me your best Daily Mail headline for our good friend Gibbo? His ten week suspension in Geelong. <laughs> oh, I won't do it as well as our uh, TikTok commenters. Um, <laughs> great cricket twat. Surprisingly, not Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Despite his best efforts, he's a pal. Um, Give him a passport, please. <laughs> well, now's probably a good time as well to shout about Outside Edge Cricket, the website, and, the website and social media empirical entity that we're <laughs> launching, uh, encompassing our podcast as well as articles and opinions for cricket lovers by cricket lovers. Slogan. Bogan slogan. Um, <laughs> At last missing asterisks. <laughs> yeah. Um, OutsideEdgeCricket.com is where you'll be able to find us after Christmas. Um, head over to Outside Edge Crick on Twitter. Make sure you don't miss a trick. We've got a small dedicated team at the moment containing myself, Trent and Oscar, who we're about to chat to. Uh, you'll realise how much more qualified he is to talk about cricket <laughs> than us two. Um, we're create, looking to create accessible content for the cricket lover that isn't so intimidating and in your face. Um, exciting times at the moment, so get around it. Uh, I think it's probably the best way to leave it. Um, without further ado, let's chat to the cricketer and now outside edge cricket writer, uh, undoubtedly one of the most ravenous cricket fans that I've ever met, <laughs> uh, Mr. Oscar Ress. I am... Um... Oscar Ress, club cricketer for Modern Wonders Career Club, second team. Uh, I am writer for The Cricketer and Outside Edge. Uh, where do you bat for Modern Wanderers out of interest, Oscar? Uh, well, I slid down from five to ten this season. Um, but, <laughs> hey, I top scored twice at, from number ten, so it says more about my teammates than it does about me. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar, thanks for hopping on, mate. Um, without beating around the bush, what are your thoughts on the IPL auction that's just taken place? I, th- I think it's interesting. The, the IPL auction is unique in cricket in terms of it's it's so far away from the competition. Um, and there's, it's had criticism about about how it, it sells players and how it you know puts players up and you're, you're sort of bidding on players and, and they're not really like people. But it keeps bringing people back. And for weeks now, we've had analysis, we've had oh, this is what we think this team should do, articles, podcasts, all sorts, previewing an auction that, that anything can happen because... Um, well, this is big money, and it might just depend on on what your team needs. So you obviously you see some players go for huge money. I think lots of people suspected Sam Curran was going to break records, and he did. Um, but there were you know big money for for people like Cam Green, who who probably hasn't proved himself on the international stage, might not even get a full gig the whole season for Mumbai Indians. Looking at their other overseas, but he's a player for the future and, and maybe that's what you're putting on the line. I want to talk about Cam Green because he's my little lover boy. Um, did you ex- expect him to go that high or were you thinking oh, a little bit lower, probably third or fourth on the rank, on the rank, sorry? I thought he was going to get this big hype and then people weren't really going to go for him and it was all going to depend when he came out in the all-rounders. People have already said that Sam Curran was probably lucky to come out first out of the three big-name all-rounders with him, Ben Stokes and Cam Green because you knew once you'd broken that record, no one was really going to be able to go afford to go higher than that. Mm. Um, 
so no it doesn't surprise me i think with with the way it works and and it's something's been been talked about is the ipl might be extended and extended extended and suddenly you want players who you think can provide batting and bowling you want people for the future because there might never be a mega auction again where you have to um release players so Cam Green at 23 could be huge in the future, but that's that's all of Mumbai Indians' is, um, overseas players. They've got well, Archer now. They've got uh, Brevis, Stubbs as batters. They've got Jai Richardson as well, who, who they signed. So they've got that nice balance. I don't know if he fits into the team. So on the face of it, you go, that's ridiculous money to spend on someone that might sit on the bench for some of the tournament. But then you go if the tournament does expand to what we think it might, and it might be like a Premier League season, well, you want your best players. And in three years' time, when he's 26 and he's been playing test cricket for however long, he might be an absolute gun. And then you have to have him in your team. And they've got him early. Interesting you mentioned as well, Oscar, about the investing in the youth, this sort of long-term project thing. It was perfectly reflected in, in these bidding wars that took place earlier today in the auction. You, you know, the the base price of two, two crore being the sort of peak level and Sam Curran going up to 18.5 crore, you know, 1.8 million quid. Cam Green Stokes also ballooning up uh, and, and it happened as well with Josh Little from 50 lakh to 4.4 crore. Are we adamant that that's that's something that's uh, in the minds of of the IPL teams going into these auctions? Well, it, it must be. I think this is a real shift we've seen. We saw Sakinda Raza is, is a, another example on the other end of the scale, thirty six. So you're probably getting him for two seasons maximum. A lot of people, while he was smashing it in the qualifiers of the T Twenty World Cup, and he scored runs against India and that. That used to be a surefire way of getting big money at an auction. You, you score runs against India, you're, you've got that recency bias, and then your your money balloons up. But he went for, for his base price. So, yeah, it seems that whole big list of of the top names that went in this auction, Sam Curran, Harry Brook, Cam Green, Ben Stokes, and Nicholas Puran, you really, Ben Stokes being the oldest at 31, for a cricketer, you can see that, people are investing in a number of years it's not like it's talked about in, in football in the Premier League where players are going for, for 50 million 100 million and you go well that's ridiculous money but but it's not ridiculous money when you compare it to what you're getting from these players and and comparing it to everywhere else in the world the IPL has no comparison so for cricketers for cricket fans we look at it and we go how are they earning two million pounds to go play for a few weeks in India. It sounds like a great a great <laughs> deal, but, but the, that might just be the way that the, the world's going. And where do you see the, the where do you see the IPL going? Like you said there's no more mega you think there's rumors of like no more mega auction. Where's it moving to? Well I think you've already seen with the um international T twenty league the the UAE one that's gonna start soon the South African T20 League, these IPL teams and these IPL owners are going and buying other teams. And mm. that it seems like it's an obvious thing that, well, suddenly those those Indian owners or those IPL owners will have a stake in every single T20 League. And suddenly these t- T20 Leagues go on the whole year. So you're picking the same sort of players and the same sort of um, people in each team. And then it's an easy link to go, okay, well, you're signed up to play for our group in three different tournaments and they're all stretching six months. So why don't we just combine it all and put it to towards one thing? So it could well end up like that. You sort of hope not because you hope there's space for other formats. You already see that the biggest impact is is ODI cricket, um, mm. w- which which looks like it's just at the end of its, its, its run. Just audition for these mega options, aren't they? Cam Green, you saw that right there. It's interesting you should mention that. These sort of, we've seen IPL teams going out and yeah, buying teams in South Africa and in, in, you know, Abu Dhabi and sorry, in the UAE. Um, are there is there now 
is there sort of a hierarchy now? Because you'll have players that are going undrafted in the IPL going to play in the ILT20, getting their sort of franchise cricket overs in. What's What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's always been the case that, that the IPL is is the best tournament. Mm, yeah. Even when the other tournament in the world was was the Big Bash, it never pretended to compete. It's now obviously not, and and you guys have, have talked about it before that it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> sliding down, um, very very fast. But um, there was always okay. Well, the IPL is the best, and 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 everyone else will compete. Um. But you look at players like Will Smead when unsold in in this um, auction. He will go and play in probably most other franchise tournaments. PSL being one, he he played really well there. He signed a white ball only contract. He's set himself up to only play these franchise tournaments. So yes, I think in his, in the back of his mind he'll be thinking, well, if I put in a good performance, maybe I'll get picked up in the auction next year, because because he needs that. Because he he's he's set his sights on on this as his career. Hmm. Do you think anyone can compete with the IPL in the future? Like the big bash, can can they make a comeback at all? I mean, can can you come back from fifteen all out? Um, <laughs> <laughs> being in the record books for all the wrong reasons is, uh, um, yeah. I I just I I don't see anyone competing with it because it's it's as I said before, like we look at that money and we go, that's mm. unbelievable. Like how on earth is that sort of money in cricket? It's because, you know, that's the only place where that money is really available. So these players, as much as we want them to be like, oh, well, you know, we'll play in our domestic competitions or we'll play in our own stuff. Well, where's the money? If you're... Yeah. Short careers. Um, yeah, I, I think... Ben Cutting is a good example. He's leaving halfway through the Big Bash. He made his name in the Big Bash. Mm. That's the reason he got an IPL gig in the first place. Um, and and he's not gone. Okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna stick out here, even though I'm probably not gonna make as much money. He has to at that stage of his career go wherever the money is, and and in in some ways that's fair enough. In other ways, you go, oh well, that that's a bit of a concern. On a more we, we, sorry, sorry, go on. We even saw that with um, like players like Trent Bolt moving away from central contracts with their own country and just like signing off the Test series when they want. So yeah, it is going to be very interesting. <laughs> on a more pessimistic note, we wrote on the Twitter this morning about how you know cricket transitioned into Australia's power with Kerry Packer's World Series cricket, and and now we're seeing that again with the BCCI and and in the IPL and. Obviously, so much has been made of the big three in that sense. But what sort of stranglehold slash monopoly does this spell? Is there something more daunting or a more daunting way of looking at it as a cricket fan? I think it's easy to be pessimistic. But, you know, with the South African competition, for example, it's a, it's an area I, I know quite well. They decided not to play the ODI series against Australia in that that phase because they wanted all their best players available for that mm. tournament because that's where all the money was coming from. They don't make any money from hosting test series unless it's India. So <laughs> you ask whether, mm. you know, this is daunting for Graham Smith, who's running the tournament, and Cricket South Africa. It's not really a choice. It, you've got people mm. who... I think it's 70 million rand is the um, prize money for that tournament. If they didn't have those investors, there's no way that money would be available to, mm. to be given to the winners. So in doing so, you get the best players and they have, they've got really strong set of players. Um, so it might, it might seem for, for maybe for, from a perspective of the English perspective and the Australian perspective who, look at it and go, well, it's the big three becoming maybe the big one and then two underneath. For other countries, they're just fighting to sort of survive and, and, and stay around in it. This is this might be their, their, their lifeline. Before we go, Oscar, who do you think has, has done the best in the IPL? If we go back to the auction, who are you backing? I think it's 
it, it's tricky. You wanted a short answer, I'm sure, but it's tricky <laughs> until you see until you see it actually happen. I thought RCB looked good because they retained quite a lot, and then knowing that they were going to probably lose Josh Hazelwood at times towards the end of the tournament, got Reese Topley in, and they've got Will Jackson just in case Glenn Maxwell's not um, not fit. That it seems to me a good plan. They were very close to to going all the way last year, and you just fill in gaps and improving the squad slightly. But when I I wrote down Mumbai Indians is overseas, and I can't think of a more exciting group of players. Hmm. You know, Josh Archer probably going to be back. Revis, Tim David, Tristan Stubbs. If they can, they were they really struggled last year because they went potential rather than these players are now coming into their potential and and are international players that yeah they could be seriously good um i just want to one last quick question who was your most underrated pickup from the auction i thought there was a couple i thought david visa is always a really good option Mm. because i looked at i saw that i looked at kkr's um sort of the, the over, overseas that they had, they've got Russell and Narayan, probably two of the greatest ever. And then it, it might just drop off a little bit. So he could be a really good option. Um, Josh Little, maybe not underrated because lots, lots of people thought he would get, hmm. get a gig, but I think, I think he could, he could be really, really good. Hmm. Phil Salt for base price. Yeah, that's, that's big. That is big. He, just gives it a whack he does give it a whack hits it hard (laughs) well anyway thanks oscar for coming on i'm sure we'll be talking to you very soon uh when we lack content and guests (laughs) (laughs) we always lack content mate (laughs) lovely thanks oscar thank you thank you